Hi everyone. It's another episode of the pod. I got um I have ice cream. I'm in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. Uh I got ice cream. I'm staying at uh I should have gotten napkins for this. That was not a good call on my end. But uh luckily I'm staying at a hotel so I can just use all of the linens provided and I always wonder if they swap out all of the linens because like if I stay at a hotel for like a short time and I'm not using like all of the hand towels do you think that if they look unused that they keep them there or do you think that they're just taking all of the towels even if they look unused to clean it's a quick question for all my housekeepers out there at hotels. If you have the info on that, let me know. Um, so yeah, I'm in beautiful Cleveland. It is a chilly ass mother effing day. It was only like maybe 57, 59 degrees, which isn't too bad, but there was 20 mile per hour winds. And that'll just mess you up. Cause that wind just smacks you in the face. With the cold, you didn't even realize you were cold at first. And then you just feel like a child wandering around a city shivering like a little baby. But, um, yeah, okay. I'm back. New episode in Cleveland. Last time, uh, last week the pod came out. I was in, where was I? I was in Indy, no, I was in uh, Philly. Let's see where I've been since then. I was in Philadelphia with Ari Manis. We got Philly cheesesteaks that were fine. And then, since then, (gasps) guys, right after that, I got to do... Radio City Music Hall in New York, and first of all, I didn't even know... So, okay, let me set the scene for you. Let me set the stage or whatever. So, I'm in Philly, then we go to New York. We take a bus there overnight. Um, I'm pretty sure it was like a... a, I can't talk anymore. I also haven't really talked to anyone today, so... This is nice. I'm using words for the first time today and it's overwhelming. So we get to New York. I felt I slept on the bus because we drive city to city overnight. And so when we wake up, we're in the next city and we go to the hotel or the venue and then you just do whatever until the show. So I wake up, everyone's already in the hotel. I slept in. I get out of the bus, we're like right in the heart of New York, right in the city, because Radio City Music Hall is near like the NBC studio and like just is right in the heart of like the, like when you think of New York, you think of this area. I'm not a New Yorker, so I don't know what the official term is for it, but anyway, I woke up, got outside. There were cars beeping, honking, people yelling. It was beautiful, you know? I'm sure it's annoying that I'm eating ice cream while I'm talking, but I wanted to feel like you're hanging out with me. I wanted to feel like a FaceTime. My mom's going to get upset that I'm eating on the podcast again. But I'm starting my period in like four or five days. Which is perfect timing because my boyfriend, who I haven't seen in about three weeks, will be arriving into town, joining me on the rest of my touring adventures in about two or three days. So I'll get to see him and just not bone him. And, well, I don't need to get into detail, but... We'll be at a hotel, so I feel like we can... I feel like that's probably the best place to bone on your period. Do you get charged if you bleed on hotel sheets? 
Let me know in the comments below. Comment below, will I get charged for free bleeding at the hotel? Or do you think they'll report me because they'll think that I was murdered or a murderer? Hmm. Anyway, perfect timing to start my period. That's why I'm eating ice cream. I felt like it. I had this big urge to just go downtown on some cream. Anyway, so I woke up in New York. I opened the bus door and the city's just there. It's all quiet on the bus and then I open the door and it's like, bam, 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 get out of the way, you fucking loser. And, um, and then I'm looking because we're parked right in front of Radio City Music Hall. So I like look at it and it's so shiny and bright. And I was like, oh, Radio City Music Hall tonight, St. Vincent with Ali Makovsky. And I just about lost my mind at the sight of that. Cause like they don't normally, like on these shows, I'm not like promoted on, you know, the marquee or anything. So that was a huge shock. And also that's like one of the most iconic venues. So, I was stoked. And um, I got to hang out with some of my friends during the day. I hung out with my friend Molly. Got coffee with my friend Erica. Tried to do a little shopping before the show with my buddy John. Um, because I wanted to see if maybe I wanted to find like a Radio City Music Hall specific outfit. But I didn't find anything that I liked, so I ended up just wearing something that I kind of, like, put to the side for this moment. And I looked great. I got to see where the Rockettes uh, practice. I got to see their costumes, their little uniforms, their outfits, which were really cute. Um, and it was just very surreal. So I did the show, my friends came out, a bunch of my friends came and watched. Um, and it was super fun. It was very cool, very surreal. I feel like it still hasn't really like hit me yet. Like it's almost like such a big deal that it doesn't seem like a big deal yet. But then when I say it, I'm like, yeah, it's a big deal. Anyway, so cool. God bless St. Vincent for having me on this journey with her. Cause I've gotten to do some cool things thanks to her. Um. Honestly, though, I think I did pretty good, but the audience was kind of tight at the beginning, but then towards the middle and end, I loved it. I had a great time. And then ever since then, I think this whole tour, without even realizing it, I think I was nervous for that show because my poops have been really bad. I've had like a nervous stomach. All of these shows I've been like so anxious beforehand. And then after I did that one, I took my first solid poop. And the rest of the shows have been like some of my favorites. I'm being a little more loose, a little more fun. So. Yeah, and then, um, so we did New York and then we left right after. Oh, also. When we were leaving, so our bus was parked in front of the venue all day. And then after the show, we had some time until our bus left. And I went on the bus early because I was tired. So I like go on the bus. I'm the only one like sleeping in there. I think there might've been one other person sleeping at the time, but people were starting to like come onto the bus to get ready to go. And I'm like, I'm in that weird, like I'm not asleep, but I'm like just about there, like kind of delirious and like a different realm. And all of a sudden, Nayana, who's one of the singers, she's on the bus and she was like, we have to get off the bus. There's like a, there's a fire below us. And I'm like, what? And I guess, so there's like, you know, there's a bunch of manholes around New York. I didn't know that a manhole was just one of those sewer things. Like I thought a manhole was like, I don't know, something a little sexual, something a little different. I didn't realize that a manhole is straight up just like a sewer top. But you know how you see those manholes or sewer top things, sewer lids, and they have like the smoke coming out of them? I always thought that that was just like sewer smoke. I don't know what I, I, don't, I guess I never really thought about what it was. Whether it was like, you know, 
fo like, I don't know. Just a bunch of sewer gremlins blazing up. I never knew what it was. Anyway, I guess when those things are smoking, it's because, I mean, I, could, I feel like I might be wrong about this, but what I took away from it was that there are explosions, like fires that happen within the sewer system and the smoke from that is what's coming out of the manhole. So there was a manhole right behind our bus that was smoking. Maybe not all of the smoke coming out of sewers is an explosion or a fire, but this particular one apparently was. And so they thought there might be another manhole directly under our bus that would also potentially be on fire. And if one explodes from the fire and the gas and the oxygen and all of that, then it would like, literally like the sewer top thing would like bust up the bus and then I might have died. So the fire department was there and there were like real New York firemen, you know, the guy, I was like, what's going on? And the guy's like, ah, there's a, Ugh, I can't do the accent. I'm going to get shit on, but I'm going to try whatever. What's the fun in not trying? He was like, yeah, there's a little fire under the bus. Was that good? I don't think so. He was like, yeah, if you guys stayed on and it exploded, it would have been over. And I'm like, okay, thank you, fireman. I said thank you, and he goes, all right. Just like, no, just, like he couldn't take like emotionality, emotions or like vulnerability. Like anytime I was like, thank you so much, he was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So anyway, we moved the bus. There was no manhole below us, but the one behind us was pretty close. And uh, I took a photo with all the firemen, obviously. I tried to get them to hold me, but they wouldn't. I think that's a missed opportunity. And um, they were so cute. I was just joking with them, having a good time, having a blast. And uh, then we went to Boston. We had a day off in Boston. My friend from back home, Nate, happened to be in Boston with his girlfriend, so... We got to hang out. I love Boston. I think it's so beautiful. Every time I go, I always go to the Boston Public Market. The first time I went, I got this pastrami sandwich that was so good. It was like a pastrami Reuben. And I got it this most recent time and it was not that good. I was quite disappointed in there. Reuben they sold me, but I love that place. There's so many different great like little restaurants in there and it's fun to just walk around a little bit. Um, but I got my steps in that day. I saw, like, a little Civil War reenactment dude walking down the street. Um, yeah, I like Boston. Sue me. I love it, even. I'll say that. I love it. Um, so, did that. Boston was one of my favorite shows I have done on this tour. Denver was also one of my favorites. Indianapolis was one of my favorites. Pittsburgh was one of my favorites. And then New Haven became one of my favorites. After Boston, I think we went to New Haven. Let me just fact check myself on that. Yep, we went to New Haven. And that was an incredible show. All those Yale students. I wasn't sure if they were going to be like, awkward like college students who like didn't want to hear about my butthole but they all did they were eating up my butthole jokes and they were great they were such a good audience and the thing about audiences is that you can just typically like tell from the beginning like if they're down to have a good time like you pick up on the energy i don't know if that makes sense to someone if you're like an audience member but I think you know what I mean some sometimes even yeah as like a concert goer in the audience you can tell which shows are more fun to be at or where the energy's better I don't know but those were my favorite so far I got to go to a music festival uh in Columbia Maryland called All Things Go so I hung out there. I didn't even see one single band. I'll be honest with you. It started raining. The venue had a pool, so I went in that. 
Um, I was getting a lot of dirty looks from TikTokers. Because there were a lot of, like, TikTok, like, musicians who I recognize from TikTok. There's this, like, girl who plays sexy bass, you know what I mean? Like, a hot girl on bass. Her name's Blue de T Tiger. Blue de Tiger. Or something like that. And then, if you're familiar with TikTok, the guy whose song is in so many videos, it's like, Living in a great blue world. With my head up in outer space, I know I'll be a o a o k. I know I'll be a o a o k. That guy, he was performing there. Girl in red. Now here's a fun fact that I've been telling everyone about Girl in Red. So Girl in Red, I don't know if she was popular before TikTok, but I know her from TikTok because, like back in the day, gay people would say like, oh, are you a friend of Dorothy? To find out if the person they were talking to was also gay. Now from TikTok, the singer Girl in Red, who is a lesbian, people will say like, oh, are you a fan of Girl in Red? Oh, do you listen to Girl in Red? To find out if another girl they're talking to is a lesbian. So she's the new Wizard of Oz for music and gay people. So there was a lot of, you know, a lot of cool, young artists on this lineup. And I got to, like, hear it, and it was fun, but I just couldn't even be bothered to move around. <sighs> I was feeling real lazy. I was just floating around in the pool while all these artists were walking by to go in their dressing rooms. I didn't even have a- I didn't bring a bathing suit with me like an idiot. So I was just rocking granny panties and a little bralette. And, um, and I made the most of it. And then, here's the tea. Here's the tea. I'm gonna, normally I would keep it in the plastic, but it makes a lot of noise. And I think that if I drop some cookie crumbs on the floor, that hopefully housekeeping will vacuum it up. That's my hope for this room. Mm. I used to love, love snickerdoodle cookies. I don't know if it's just becoming an adult or something, but I haven't had one since childhood that has made me feel warm and fuzzy inside like it used to. It's pretty good. I'm gonna douse it in the ice cream. Um, okay. So here's the tea. Here's the gossip for this week. Here's the drama. So I'm at this music festival and I want to try and tell this story without giving too much away. Okay, so I'm in the pool for the second time of the day, this time at night. It's nice. The pool is like 85 degrees and it was like raining out. So it felt kind of like I was in a Hillary Duff music video or something. And I see this person I know from back home at the festival. And they're walking towards the dressing room, like inside area. But everyone who's going to the inside dressing room stage area has to walk by the pool. So I see them and I'm like, oh my gosh, someone I know from home is here. And this is someone I know. We're like friends on Instagram. We have each other's phone number, but we don't hang out one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we hang out within a small group of mutual friends, but we're not like besties or anything, but you know, we're acquaintances enough. And when they walk back out, I start calling their name because I'm like, I want to say hi. So I call their name and they like come up to me and they're just acting so freaking phony and lame. So when this person walks back outside towards the pool from the green room, dressing room area, I start calling their name because I'm like, I want to say hi to them. 
So they come over to me. I'm like, hi, oh my God. And they were just being so phony and lame. You know, it's like when you know someone in one way and you have like good conversations and then all of a sudden they're in like a different environment with different people and they start being all like, just phony. It pissed me off. And to this person's benefit, they weren't being that, they weren't being that like phony or rude or anything. I just could tell, like, I just know that this is the type of person who, like, ditches their, like, lame friends for their cool friends. You know the type of person? And I have empathy for that because I feel like I used to do that. And then I think I might have talked about it on the podcast, but it's like, like, my boyfriend was telling me, like, you know, he has a friend and... You know, say he was going to, like, a cool party or something. If he was hanging out with the friend, he wouldn't just ditch the friend to do this cool thing because he thought the friend wouldn't be, like, welcomed. And I realized, like, oh, I'm the type of person who, like, tries to control how, you know, I'm perceived based on who I'm with and who I bring. And it's like, who cares? Bring the friend that you like hanging out with in this scenario to whatever thing. And let other people judge. Like, it's not your responsibility to protect other people's feelings towards other people. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Do I sound like Russell Brand? Is this like a dumb Russell Brand podcast? (sighs) Mm. Mm. Also, big apologies to the homies in my Zoom. Um, I got messed up with the time difference and didn't make the Zoom on time. But we're doing another one this month. So I will see you there. I'm setting like 12 reminders on my phone. I always feel like such a big freaking idiot when I miss a damn Zoom. But there's another one coming up. When is it? Let me check. Because it might already be happening once... I don't know. When is it? Pay- oh! It's on October 30th at 3 p.m. I don't know if it's Pacific or Eastern, but I will find out. It's on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Allie Mikofsky. If you want to join the top tier and hang out with me and the homies on Zoom. Um... But yeah, what was I saying? I was talking about New Haven. I was talking about, oh yeah, the phony person, whatever, whatever. It's funny, I'm staying at the same hotel I stayed at last time I was in Cleveland doing hilarities, which wasn't that long ago. I can't remember when I was here But I was only here for such a brief amount of time, and now I have the whole day off today. And then tomorrow we have our show. Oh yeah, August 19th was when, was the last time I was in. Oh, that was only two months ago. That wasn't that long. Um, but anyway, I got some questions on Instagram, so I think I'll answer some of those. And then we'll see what happens later. Drew underscore Westby said, is virtual reality lame? And to that I say no. Virtual reality is very fun. Um, I think like the the ones, like the OG virtual reality stuff or sometimes like the graphics aren't that good and it feels really corny and weird. But when virtual reality first came out, my friend had it. I don't want to name names, but his name is Nick. And he had porn, virtual reality porn. And it was so wild, but I'd be too nervous, like touching myself with my eyes closed like that. Cause I always think like a ghost is gonna like come and molest me or something. I need all my senses available, but it was very cool to like view 
Um, and I wouldn't say it feels like real necessarily, but it's a more unique way of getting off than watching porn on your computer or phone. Do you guys ever get paranoid J-O-ing with your phone or computer? Because sometimes, I mean, this is weird, but I didn't think it was weird until I told my boyfriend. He's like, that's weird. But sometimes I'll start, this is probably why I don't have orga- orgasms, because I'm always distracted. I'll be like on my phone, like scrolling through Instagram or TikTok while J-O-ing. And, uh, and when I'm getting close to, you know, the climax area, sensation time, I, like, turn my phone slightly away from my face. Like, it's fine for the FBI to be watching me while I'm like, here we go, here we go, but as soon as I'm like, we're here, I turn it away. That feels somehow too personal to talk about, and I regret it immediately. But anyway, no, I think virtual reality is cool, but only in small doses. Tony X Pele as I know this person and I still don't know how to pronounce their Instagram name, said, what's your craziest baked wing story? Um, so I was working at this chicken wings place on Melrose Avenue, which is where a lot of people like go to shop and a lot of people like resell high value sneakers. And because there's so much money involved in these processes, I was working there one day and a lot of times like high school kids or middle school kids would come by after school and, or like on the weekends or whatever during the day. And I remember there was like some 13 year old, maybe he was like 15 and he had a, like a bag filled with sneakers and some dude pulled up to him with like a gun in his sweater and was pointing it like this, like covered. Like, I never saw the gun, but he was pointing at the kid. And uh, I thought I might witness a murder. But yeah, those are mostly the crazy stories from Baked Wings. Just always some sort of fight. Like, fights would break out inside of the store and I'd just be like, Hey guys, hey. Hey guys, could you, um, excuse me, could you not fight in here? You know? Want underscore Chilliam says, how do you handle breakups? Um, I don't know because not that this changes anything, but I typically am the person to break up with the other party. So I think for me, like I've, someone has a joke about this. Who is it? Fuck. It's so good. Female comic has this joke about how, is it? Oh, Annie Letterman has this joke about how, um, how she says, I think I'm going to break up with, or the joke is me and my boyfriend are breaking up in three weeks because it's like, I'm already broken up with this person three weeks before it happens. So I'm already like processing the breakup. And trying to, like, build the courage to end it. It's such a scary feeling. But also, it still is hard after. I think, how do you handle breakups? Like, reach out to your friends. Have some alone time. Process your emotions. Hang out with friends. Figure out... Make sure you know what you want in your next relationship. Make, like, a list of qualities and things that are important to you. So that way, when you're ready to date again, you don't waste your time. And you can be with someone that you want to be with long term and not be disappointed by certain qualities or whatever. This next question comes from Saint underscore Vincent, who just simply said Tijuana. I've told this story before, but... The great Tijuana story is that I went to Tijuana with my friends Jamar Neighbors and Ari Manis and we were doing shows in San Diego and Ari was driving and Ari was like, bring your passport. And I'm like, that's weird to bring a passport to San Diego. But I found out he wanted to go to Tijuana, Mexico after our shows because it's like very close to San Diego. It's on the border. 
And so when we're driving after the shows from San Diego to Tijuana, Ari's like, hey, Allie, if me and Jamar get a woman to sleep with, will you also sleep with a woman? And I was like, anything for the boys. And when I say a woman, I mean a sex worker, because in Tijuana, there are these like strip clubs where you can pay to have sex with the women. And so we get to this like strip club and they're just playing like top 100 hits. There's no like DJ. And so there's just like Adele's Hello playing in the background while being like seduced by these women. And so the guys find girls that they want to hook up with. They go to the room. I'm like sitting there kind of speaking poquito espanol to this lady who's sitting with me. And then when they're done, they're like, Allie, how was it? And I was like, oh, I didn't do anything. And they're like, we'll wait for you. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like looking around the club, trying to find like a cute girl. I finally find one. I'm like, she's the one, you know, this is a match made in heaven. And so we go back and she's walking over there and she's really confused. She's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I don't know what to do either. And she's like, this is my first time. I'm like, this is also my first time. I was like, just do what you do, you know, for me, like what you do for the guys. And so then she starts jerking me off. No, um, she spit on my coochie and it wasn't enjoyable, but um, it was a good memory. It's a good story to retell. Me and the boys, whenever we're back together, we'll always remember Tijuana. Um, we also spent like the first 10 minutes just like casually talking and they have like TVs in the room. So we were also like watching kind of like TV. And then we got tacos and went back home. But that's my Tijuana story. I tell it better in person. It's hard to retell this without a captive audience. That's the weird thing about doing the podcast. I need to get in the right headspace for it. Because I, I get so, uh, I feel like I get so in my head now. Because it's easier for me to like talk to people when I'm seeing their reaction and seeing how the story's going, whether I should like keep going with some things or like, you know, change topics. I don't know, whatever. Whatever. Um, that's it. Danny underscore Bago said, what drugs to stay up when doing late shows? Danny, I hate to break it to you, but I'm a sober woman. My answer has to be Uptime Energy Drink. I'm not sponsored by them. They refuse to have sponsors or a marketing campaign or anything. I honestly think that they're, like, trying to be, like, underground or something. Like, I think they want their business to fail. Because you can only find them in 7-Elevens. I've found them in a couple truck stops and a couple Flying J's on the road. Um... But that energy drink fucking slaps. That wakes me up. It's the only energy drink I like that tastes good. I used to be a Celsius girl. I still am. I, I enjoy Celsius. But once I discovered Uptime, that was it for me. If you have the opportunity, if you live near 7-Eleven, you must try it. It's delicious. And it helps me stay up. Mad.Kel said, what is your favorite album right now? Um, I like Car Seat Headrest album. I think it's called, it's either called Teens of Denial or Tears of Denial. Let's check. Car Seat Headrest is one of my favorite bands right now. Car Seat Headrest. Um, oh, Teens of Denial is a good one. And also Twin Fantasy. I listen to both of those a lot right now. John Teal underscore said, when will you be back in LA? I'm ready to see my first comedy show. John, I would love to be your first comedy show. I'll be back in LA, I think in November. Um, 
Go to AllieMikofsky.com slash shows. I'm sure once I get home, I'll be performing at the improv, maybe the comedy store as well. So just stay tuned. Keep track of my Instagram. I'm sure I'll post about it. And uh, yeah, I don't quite know at the moment though. Also, AllieMikofsky.com slash shows. Okay, last question. Germ702 asked, reality TV, which show would you do, Survivor or Big Brother? I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about this. My thoughts about reality TV is that I have been watching Big Brother ever since, oops, I've been watching Big Brother ever since it came out when I was just a child. Um, me and my family would watch it every summer. We loved it, um, but then we kind of fell off. Once my sister went to college, we didn't have, my oldest sister was like the biggest Big Brother fan. And then once she left for college, we just kind of like, and honestly divided the family with Big Brother. But I love that show. Um, Survivor, I wasn't as into. It wasn't like a part of my family's like, thing that we would do but I started watching Big Brother during the pandemic or sorry I started watching Survivor during the pandemic and I really enjoy it I feel like I feel like Survivor I might be able to get by longer using charm but no I actually I don't know how charming I actually am Sometimes I like to think people would just fall in love with me and want to keep me around, but I'm not like physical in any way. But Big Brother, you also have to be physical. I think I'd feel more comfortable on Big Brother, but I'd be worried that people are watching me all the time. It's stressful. But you know what? I love, I would say Big Brother because I'd love to just gossip with everyone and talk shit and then try and win head of household. I don't know. It just seems more interesting. But I haven't seen it recently, so I don't know if it's, like, changed. I feel like a lot of reality shows have become, like, influencer competitions who can make the most sponsored ads after, you know, the show and get, you know, Instagram deals. But I think Big Brother would be fun. My childhood self would be very happy. I would like to do it. It's just so much pressure. Because everyone starts, like, following you after and, like, digging into everything. And it just feels really scary to have that kind of following. Like, people who just want to, like, become obsessed with you. I don't know. It seems like a lot now. I'd have to, like, go dark. Go rogue. But, yeah, I do love Big Brother. Anyway. Okay, that's it for me this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a decent week. Um, hopefully I'll see you on the road. I'm going to be headlining. I'm going to Texas. I'm going to Arizona. Uh, where else am I going? I think I'm going to like St. Louis. I'm going to Washington, D.C. I'm going to the Bay Area. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be coming a lot of places doing my headlining shows. And I hope I will see you there. Uh, and I'll see you next week. Bye.